Hey, Markiplier here. Welcome back to another video. This one's going to be a tips and tricks video. It's going to be super fast. So let's just get straight into it. I made this demo website for a CodeDraws article, so it's not like good practice or anything. But there's a few insights that I learned from working on this that I can make into like a quick tip and trick video. So the whole premise is you go through three different scenes. They all have the same character, so Miffy and Pusheen is in this, in this second scene. And this is from Dick Bruna's universe of Miffy. So if those look familiar, this is just a panda version of Boris. Um, and the idea is you can go through scenes. So here there's the Pusheen, and then this has got some delicious, delicious sushi right there. Yum, yum, yum. And then over here is just a paper sort of craft world there is audio but it would be copyright striked if i used it uh in the video so i'm not going to play the audio but as i scroll you can see now it's the nighttime version and i go here and all the characters are removed and i go through here all characters are removed but pusheen is now sleeping and then over here you can see that now miffy and boris are sleeping and the sun is replaced over there and then every time it just loops and loops and loops and loops. This was like more of a concept website, so it's broken on iOS devices and not responsive. And there was like a lot of things I wanted to add that I never ended up adding. I still have a lot of takeaways from this project that I can put in tips and tricks. As usual, GitHub is public. So is the Blender and Figma file. All credits and resources are listed here. Do not look at the code. The code is terrible. It was mostly AI generated code, but I will cover some of the concepts that I learned. But like, that's the really cool thing about AI these days. Like you can just like make a concept so quickly. I like, I use, I copied a template from one of my other projects. It's based on the one that I did in the Minecraft one. Just make sure to do check and update because I did make an update to the curve over there. So if you want a step-by-step -step version, you can watch this video. Otherwise you can just copy the code. And I'm also like 99% sure AI will know how to teach you how to make a camera move smoothly along a curve as well. So you don't really need to watch my video. And then I just used the AI for the rest of it. And I feel like, I don't even remember, but this was like so quick. But yeah, nowadays you can just like churn out content concepts left and right, which is like really, really crazy. So the first tip I have is use AI to generate Python scripts for you in Blender. The first one being the way to add a second UV map named Simple Bake and also select it as well. So here I have these two cubes in Blender and you can see they only have one UV map. All I have to do is go to scripting, hit new over here. And this was generated by ChatGPT and I'm just gonna paste that in there, run it. And let's go back to layout. And now you can see I have Simple Bake over here and it's both highlighted, so now, all I have to do, you know, unwrap, just like we did in previous videos. Done, done, done. I don't have to add it. I don't have to copy and paste it. I don't have to select it. It does it for all my objects. And if you want to specify it, you like do it only for objects in this collection or this collection or this collection. That way you don't do it for everything in your scene. So just specify that to the AI and it will easily be able to handle that for you. The second tip I have is use AI to generate a Blender add-on that, that exports Blender curves into 3GS curve points. So my path, I created the curve this time actually in Blender. And now with that add-on, I can just do file and export and curve to 3GS points. And here I have something called sample points, which will like sample points along this curve, or it can just do the control points. So the control points are, let me, I'll show you that in a little bit, but here I have options to do JSON or JavaScript. I just exported it as control points in 3GS. And here you can just see control points just means these. If you do sample, it'll like sample along this curve and generate you points that way and look what it exported so all i have to do is just copy and paste this into my own code another really awesome blender plugins like this one where it live updates all you have to do is like make some adjustments in blender they have like some custom add-on here for blender and you can just see it automatically updates their 3GS file as well. I will put this case study in the description. There's other tools like this over here. I think this one also live updates from 3GS into Blender. I haven't tried it out yet, so I can't speak to it, but I do plan to hopefully make my own version of this one day. So if so, if you can make something live updates like this with curves, that would be awesome as well. There's also this one by this amazing creative studio. I haven't tried this one either, but I think this one is more robust and has more features than the one that I generated with ChatGPT. So feel free to check this one out as well. I think I've seen like three or four other ones, but I feel like the most relevant feature is just going to be exporting for your control points anyway. Or if you want to go for something more complicated, you could totally do that as well.
Okay, so the third, I guess not really a tip or trick, but like some cool stuff you can do to make a scene transition like this without anything complex rendering targets or anything is just use some conditional rendering. You could probably also get away with opacity or just making the scale 0, 0, 0, and then making the scale 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 instead of toggling on and off visibility. It depends on your use case and whatnot. But basically all I did was I just had a bunch of pre-positioned scenes here. So you can see I first scene, which is this, and then this is the sushi shop for the second scene and third scene and so on and so forth. So yeah, that's all I did in code. I just toggled on visibility on or off. So based on where my camera is along the curve, which is a value between zero and one, you can see I just pass in the progress as a prop. I choose a range in which I want to show it. Otherwise, it doesn't display it at all. Now, the downside of this approach is it's going to cause some freezes and crashes on like iOS devices if you're toggling a bunch all at one single time. And that's exactly the issue with mine. And I didn't bother to fix it because I was burning out. But if you're doing a small scene or like progressively conditional rendering, or you want to go for an opacity or scale approach instead, that is one way to prevent it from crashing. It kind of also depends like how many textures you're like toggling on and off at a time and so on and so forth. So like it's very varied, but it's just one cool thing you could do. So for all of these, I just baked all of them statically. You could move this door out into oblivion and bake it separately onto the texture. I was just too lazy to do that. So I just baked it and the entire side was black and I just remapped it to some other portion of my of my image texture. The other one is just literally just a pipe. So let me just hide that. You can see it's just a pipe over there. For the paper one, I just used a knife tool to cut it out and you can see the origin there. And it's really cool because from far away, you don't see the edges, but as you get closer, you start seeing the edges. So you don't have to worry about them seeing some edges when they're far away. They only start seeing it when they get a little bit closer. So the last tip I have is just to create invisible bounding boxes for SVGs or photos or anything you're using when you're like creating a similar UV map and you want to replace it with another design that has a different aspect ratio or resolution. So for example, these over here, I just replaced them with nighttime versions. You can also just like toggle on and off and switch between two separate plane models if you wanted to as well, which is what I did here. You can see Pusheen is a separate one over here. So I just toggled that based on the loop counter. But for these, I just swapped the texture themselves. So you could adjust the UV map in code as well if you wanted to, or like the scale and position, which would effectively be the same thing. But it was just easier just to create an invisible bounding box over here that you can see that has the same resolution as the one over here. That way the UV map doesn't really matter that much. I did have to move it slightly down with code, I think because of this gap over here, but honestly, it's not really a big deal. Also this trail you're looking up with the plane is just a one from React 3 Dre or Dry. So I didn't really do anything special there either. Peace out and take care.